Okay, so today's video is on identifying bias and author credibility, video 5.6. At the end of the tutorial, you will understand what bias is and how to identify it, as well as how to determine the author's credibility. One thing I wanted to point out that I did give you a different looking pencil this time, so please be on the lookout for this pencil right here for taking your notes. And there's only a small amount of notes smattered throughout here, so just be on the lookout for that pencil. All right, what is bias? Well, if you remember from our vocab word in class, bias is the opinion that stops the author from looking at the topic with a neutral point of view. So they're only taking one stance on it and giving information on one stance. You are biased. But what does that mean? Well, if someone were to ask you what's your favorite breakfast food, favorite equals bias. Or what if someone asked you what do you prefer? Dogs or cats? Preference equals bias. Bias is not always a bad thing. Humans are not robots. I have no opinions. That's a really bad robot voice, but deal with it. All right, there's the pencil again. Bias does not belong in some types of nonfiction, so it's really important that we are able to identify when an author is being biased. All right, so here's an example. Biased author number one, Enrique McPowdy Pants. So here's the first scenario. You want to see a good action movie, so you read some movie reviews online. Enrique McPowdy Pants is a famous movie critic who writes a weekly movie review blog. He does not like Diesel Von Muscles, the star of the movie Robots from Space versus Giant Lobsters from the Deep. Because Von Muscle once spilled cocktail sauce all over McPowdy Pants' tie at a fancy Hollywood party. Even though McPowdy Pants actually really enjoyed the movie, he writes that it was terrible because he doesn't want Diesel Von Muscles to get any money or credit for being a good actor. The critic is biased, or the author, McPowdy Pants, is biased against movies which star Diesel Von Muscles, so you cannot trust his opinion about this movie. Here's another one. Biased author number two, Sally Sassafras. I just like saying sassafras. Let's say that a couple of times, shall we? All right, here we go. Scenario number two. You are interested in buying a new smartphone. Sally Sassafras is the owner of Phonies, a cell phone store. You go to Phonies and talk to Sally, telling her all about the features you're looking for in a smartphone. You ask about the iPhone 4S, but Sally talks you out of it, and you get something else instead. Later, you find out that Phonies doesn't carry iPhones. Obviously, Sally is biased against phones her store doesn't sell and biased towards the phones that they do. So biased against and biased towards. So in each of these scenarios, the author's information is untrustworthy. We cannot accept what they tell us because we know their opinions are influencing their reporting of the information. So you have to find the bias before it tricks you. Here's how. Some clues to look for. Generalizations. These are things that are not where the author is not really being specific. They're just making broad overall statements. Very similar to the statements we saw in the climate change articles one and two that we read in class. For example, dogs are more social than cats. Another example is exaggerations. These are things where the author is overstating something or stretching the truth. For example, all students play games on their iPads during class. Another example, loaded words. So this is where the author is using words designed to make you emotional, either in a good or bad way. So Congressman Smith was born near the green pastures of the Willamette Valley and raised with wholesome value, family values. So using green pastures, raised with wholesome, wholesome, the word wholesome, definitely some loaded words. And then opinions. This is where the author is giving you specifically the way that they feel. Um, it's not necessarily based on fact. Lucky Charms is the best cereal ever, is my, is my example. All right. So how could these ideas have been expressed with less bias? All right, let's go back to this one. Dogs are more social than cats. 
All right, less bias. Dogs are social creatures by nature, while cats tend to be less dependent on their owners for affection and attention. Of course, there are exceptions to this rule. Or how about that one where we said all students play games on their iPads during class? Less bias. Many students are occasionally tempted to play games on their iPads during class. How about um, the one where we said Congressman Smith was born near green pastures? We could say less bias. Congressman Smith was raised in Oregon's Willamette Valley region. Much better. How about Lucky Charms, the best cereal ever? Well, how about we go instead of opinion, we go with fact. A recent study by the National Product Poll Association showed that 35% of Americans prefer Lucky Charms cereal over all other cereals. All right, now let's move into author credibility. Author credibility means you can prove that they are a good source, that they've used good facts and materials, and you can trust their information. So the question is, if an author is biased on something and is not using facts to support their point, are they credible? How do you determine if an author is credible? Some things to consider. Where is the info coming from? What is the author's background? When was this information published? Has it been reviewed by anyone? And are there sources cited in the article? Oh, and finally, is it biased? So I want you to take some time here, and if you're using the guided notes, this is going to be nice and easy. So I've got on the side here the types of factors to consider, all the things that I just went over. And then I've kind of, on the chart, it's got least reliable, possibly reliable, and most reliable. So when you're asking what type of source is it, if it's an unfamiliar website, it's not very reliable. But if it's published material, like an actual magazine article or something that's been published online or something, that's much more reliable. If it's on an official website, an institution site, an academic journal, then that's the most reliable information. What about the author's background? Are they uncredited? Is it just some random blogger? Are they educated on this topic? Or are they an expert in the field? Date published. If there's none listed, it's not very reliable. If it's outdated, let's say it was written in the last five, like five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, it's outdated. You want to look for something that's been recently published or recently revised. The depth of the review. Is it controversial? Is it, does it have good public response and general approval? Has it been peer reviewed? Like, are there people that have reviewed this and said it was a good article? How about sources cited? If they don't have any sources cited, it's not very reliable. If they have a few sources cited and they're credible, you know that they come from a published website or something, then, then that's better, right? If they are actually citing something in a fully you know, MLA or APA style bibliography or resources, that is the most reliable option. And then when we talk about ob objectivity, like if the author is clearly showing a bias towards one stance um, on the topic, that's less reliable. If they are writing something and it's on a sponsored source, like let's say like CNN.com or something, even if it's still biased, that's a little bit more reliable than if you were just reading some blogger's website or article, for example. But if it's a balanced, neutral article with facts on both sides, that's a really reliable, credible source. So you have to, when, when we're looking at this particular proficiency and we're asking for you to tell us the credibility of the author, all of these things need to be taken into account. And if you can at least find one or two items to comment on, that would get you an A. So, for example, both the articles, the climate change articles, talk about the author's background. If you could at least list that this author is an expert in the field of business, he is a professor at the University of Alabama, that's going to be helpful. Okay, whew, you're finished. Don't forget to do the digital whisk and press submit. And I borrowed this original Prezi from another teacher and kind of added to it and amended a few things. So I wanted to give them credit. But please don't forget to fill out the digital whisk and press submit. And I'll see you in class tomorrow. Thanks, guys.